Michigan had a major role in Tuesday's January 6 hearing and the election for that matter. A Republican lawmaker detailed what happened when former President Trump tweeted out his personal cell phone number. And we also learned that Trump supporters wanted to hide out in the state capitol to overturn the election results. Former state GOP chair Laura Cox testifying when she heard this scheme to have a fake slate of electors hiding in the Capitol. This was her reaction. Michigan Republican electors were planning to meet in the Capitol and hide overnight so that they could fulfill the role of casting their vote in per law in the Michigan uh, uh, chambers and um, I told him in no uncertain terms that that was insane and inappropriate. The fake electors ultimately did not do that but did try to access the Capitol and were turned away by MSP. Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky testified when the president invited top Michigan GOP legislators to D.C. He told the president they would be following the law in Michigan. Trump wasn't pleased by that response and then tweeted out Shirky's personal phone number as part of a pressure campaign. All I remember is receiving just shy of 4,000 text messages over a short period of time. It, it was a loud noise, loud, consistent cadence. So, you know, we hear that the, that, uh, the uh, Trump uh, folks are calling and asking for changes in the electors and you guys can do this. Well, you know, they were they were believing things that were untrue. And Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson testified that armed Trump supporters surrounded her Detroit home after the election, shouting, stop the steal. One yelling, murderers. She's described it to the committee as scary, not knowing whether she and her family were going to be physically attacked. It was really hard to watch again today because I was reminded how for a good 45 minutes, the only thing that stood between that crowd and my family was one neighborhood security guard who you could see standing on that porch. When Detroit police arrived on the scene that night at Benson's house, there were no arrests. As far as that fake electors scheme, Attorney General Dana Nessel's office has turned over her findings to the feds. And this morning, we are talking live with Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson about her testimony yesterday. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, had to be a bit intimidating being there. Talk to us about that experience yesterday. Well, I, I met with the committee a number of times over the last several months, and it was really just a, a gratifying opportunity to tell our story of what we endured in Michigan with an eye towards recognizing that this could happen again if we don't see really accountability and, and the truth revealed. So um, it's certainly it's an honor to, to be able to share that truth, what we experienced uh, with the committee, uh, but really with an eye towards making sure we're ready if and when it happens again. So when we look back to the prior election and what was happening leading up to that day, as you were preparing and planning for the election and making sure that things were secure for the state of Michigan voters, were you aware that any of this may have been going on? Yes, I mean, every day there was a new um, challenge uh, to the certification of our results, uh, to uh, the, uh, you know, the, the effort to, you know, simply make sure that our election results were uh, efficiently tabulated and then fighting the misinformation. What was not clear and what's become more clear in the months that followed is really how coordinated the effort was, that this was happening in other states as well, and that it was all culminating in the tragedy at our U.S. Capitol on January 6th with an eye towards presenting an alternate slate of electors that weren't elected by the people of Michigan uh, to stand uh, in the place of uh, the votes of millions of Michiganders and instead supplant those votes with um, a false slate of electors. So with that coming forward and recognizing it wasn't just Michigan, it was other states as well, it's important to draw those connections again with an eye towards making sure that if and when this is ever attempted again, we're ready and can ensure that it is again unsuccessful. So what steps are being taken and are you coordinating with other states in your approach to this? 
Yes, we are at this point. It, it, there was minimal coordination in 2020. Uh, and that's one of the things we want to make sure, since we're all in many ways battling the same challenges, uh, that there is coordination. But of course, the, the question is, uh, you know, uh, the, this year's elections, what is going to be, uh, what additional things are going to be tried? We already know uh, there's been an effort to recruit uh, election workers, which is a great thing, uh, but then to feed them with misinformation about our elections which is a troubling thing because that can potentially weaponize individuals to show up on election day and cause uh, uh, confusion, chaos, or interfere with the smoothness of the election process. Uh, but the, the, the good news is we have already survived this, this significant coordinated effort to undermine our democracy in 2020. And that has made all of us, all of our clerks, Democrats, Republicans, independents, ready for whatever comes our way this year and in, in beyond through that coordination, but also through the experience uh, that we endured and what we learned from it. Well, speaking of the experience, having all of those people outside of your front door had to be terrifying. Yeah, and 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 hearing or seeing the video again yesterday was really um, uh, challenging <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to, to be reminded of. But at the same time, it really underscores this moment that we're in, uh, that there's no bottom to uh, where people were willing to go to try to interfere with the, the votes of millions of Michiganders. Uh, and it also emboldened me to continue to protecting them, regardless of how someone votes or who they vote for, Republican, Democrat, Independent, their vote counts and their voice needs to be heard. And I'm proud to stand in defense of, of our process, of our democracy, because that's who we are as Americans. And sometimes being uh, a democracy requires us to stand on the front lines like that and face down those challenges in order to survive and ensure democracy prevails. It can be very challenging to be an elected official. So we thank you so much for enduring all of that and staying with it. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thanks for having me.